Hey everyone, it's Sheena and today I'm going to be reviewing the Bondi Sands I'll Show You Tan Self Tanning Foam in Ultra Dark. I am a huge self tanner lover. I always have self tan on even through the winter time. I don't think that there is more than a day or two that I go without a self tan and I have tried all of them under the sun. And I have to say that out of all the self tanners that I have tried, this has definitely been my favorite and that says a lot because I've tried quite a few. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you've seen me test out so many different ones. I'm always looking for the next best one and this one has definitely done it for me this summer. This is in no way sponsored by Bondi Sands. I personally bought this myself from Amazon. I love how I can just get this on Amazon Prime really easily and it ranges I think around $20 to $25 which isn't too bad. Totally worth it in my opinion. Today I'm going to be taking you through just some of the things I like about it and also how I apply it. And I have a video that I did on how to self tan for beginners and that takes you through very broken down step by step and really easy to follow on how to self tan to where you don't get streaks, you don't get dark areas on your hands and I share tons of tips and tricks and things I've learned over the years from self tanning so much and it's definitely something that's trial and error. So I've learned a lot and that is using one of my other favorite self tanners, but I think this one definitely is better than that one. So that's really exciting that I found something even better. So to start off, this is a self tanning foam, which is my favorite type of formula. I don't really like lotions because I find them really hard to blend in and just harder to apply. I don't really like sprays as much either because you have to sit there and pump out several sprays and foam is just really the quickest and easiest thing to do. And when I self tan once a week, I want to get the job done really quickly and blend it out pretty flawlessly. This gets me the darkest out of any self tanner that I've used, which says a lot because I kind of have a hard time getting pretty dark like it takes my skin quite a few layers typically to get dark and with this one I can just do one application and I am dark enough to where I'm totally comfortable wearing shorts and dresses and all that kind of stuff so that's another thing I really like it doesn't smell it does not streak it doesn't leave my hands or my knees or elbows too dark and like I said I do share tips on how to avoid that with any self tanner in that other video that I mentioned that I will link down below. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through the steps on how I apply it. So this does not come with a tanning mitt when you order it on Amazon, but I actually use a tanning mitt that I have from Sun Goddess that I really like. It's like a velvet material. Um, I will link that for you too on Amazon if I can find those, but I'm sure that they make them too if you wanted to order them with it if you don't already have one. But I highly recommend looking for a mitt that is lined on the inside so the product does not soak through and get on your hands and one that is a really velvety soft material, not the ones that are like a spongy foam. Those don't work as good and the product just soaks right through. So I typically do this routine on Friday nights when I want to look pretty tan for the weekend. So the first thing I always do is soak in the tub. You wanna make sure that your skin is softened before you exfoliate and you wanna remove any dead skin on your skin, any leftover tan, and you also are gonna to wanna to shave. So that's why I usually hop in the tub, I run a bubble bath, I usually add Epsom salt to make it really relaxing for myself. And this is when I soak for maybe 20 minutes before I actually go in and exfoliate. So the products that I'm gonna be using to exfoliate, these are some of my favorite products. I always order these on repeat because I use them so much. I just like the Cetaphil body wash. And then I have this exfoliating cloth that I actually got from Walmart years ago and I just pop it in the wash every week after I use it. But it has a really rough texture mesh material on it. It's like a normal washcloth, but it has that mesh on top. And that is the best thing I've ever used to exfoliate. I've tried so many different things. Body scrubs never do the job. I like having that manual exfoliation with my hands. So just some regular old body wash, but you do want to use a body wash that doesn't have any oils or anything because you don't want any residue left over on your skin. And same with your bubble bath and anything you put in the tub, make sure it doesn't have oil. So I don't recommend using bath bombs and all kinds of stuff before you self tan. Then I'm also gonna shave, um, which I do recommend doing because you don't wanna really shave after you apply self tanner. I mean, you can, but it can kind of remove some of the self tanner, um, especially if you're shaving later in the week because once your skin starts to go through its cycle, like everyone's skin has a cycle to where it starts to shut off and everyone's skin is different. So this self tanner is gonna last longer depending on how long your skin typically goes through its cycle. So for me, it's usually about seven days um, definitely by day eight, I do need to remove it. I've heard of self tanners that last up to two weeks or 10 days, but I don't really believe in it. I've never found them to last that long because everyone's skin goes through that cycle. So if it's shedding off, like with flaking off with dead skin, the tan's gonna come off with it. Um, so this one does, however, give me the best color on day seven to where I don't look like I have a weird skin disease. It doesn't look like it's fading off weird. It fades pretty evenly. 
Um, and I'm still pretty dark. This one is the darkest that I have been at the end of the week with self tanner out of any self tanners that I've tried. So back to the routine. After I exfoliate, get everything off, then I shave afterwards. You wanna shave after exfoliating, obviously, because you don't wanna be scrubbing skin after you just shaved. Um, and then I just rinse off. I like to just rinse everything with clean water when I get out of the tub and then I pat myself dry. And then you want to kind of wait like 20 or 30 minutes for yourself to really get dry after the bath. You want your skin to feel just kind of back to normal. So every time before I apply self tanner, I like to apply a thick moisturizing cream to any dry areas. And this is critical for avoiding those really weird looking hands and feet and elbows and stuff. This is pretty much like using a barrier. I love this Cetaphil cream. It's my go-to, it's fragrance free. It doesn't irritate my skin. And I just apply this to my hands and my elbows and just anywhere where I don't want the self tanner to overdevelop. And that kind of keeps that barrier to where the tanner will still get through. You're not gonna have white hands, but it's just gonna be a lot more even. If you had super dry skin, you could apply lotion first and if you were worried about it getting too dark, um, but I liked it to be really dark. So I usually don't have anything on my skin, like on the rest of my body, except for the areas I don't want to overdevelop. So now I'm gonna show you actually how I apply it. I just use, like I said, my Sun Goddess Mitt. I usually start at my feet and work my way up, but for the video, I'm just showing you the top area. I just have my robe wrapped around me and I'm just doing two pumps usually in each area, two pumps for each section of my arms. So I do like two on the top section and then two on the bottom section. And then for the hand area, I really recommend just waiting and using whatever's left over on the mitt. Like don't actually pump more product onto the mitt. Just kind of spread the self tanner over your hand and just do it really lightly. You can kind of just blend out what is left over. And I love using a mitt like this because it's just so easy. You don't have to worry about gloves and switching hands and everything. You can just kind of apply it to the top of your hand and you're good to go. Another thing with this self tanner is it does have the color guard in it, that bronzer layer so you can see where you're applying it. It makes sure that you apply everything evenly because you can see where it's on your skin. Um, but the one negative thing I will say about this self tanner is the color guard is so dark and it also turns things like pinkish orange. So it definitely does rub off on your sheets when you're sleeping and when it's first on your skin, like before it soaks in, if you're walking around and you brush up against something or you sit on the couch, it's definitely gonna rub off on that. I just noticed with this one, it just comes off on everything so easily. That might bother you. It doesn't personally bother me because that's the only bad thing about this and I love everything else. So what I do is I usually just put on something really loose, like really loose pajama shorts and a big t-shirt. And I just kind of walk around the house with the fans on and stuff and just kind of let myself air dry before I even sit down. Um, or I will just lay out like a towel or a sheet if I'm gonna be sitting on the couch and just kind of wait for everything to dry. And I usually do that for maybe 30 minutes or so before I go to bed. Um, but I just find that it to not be that big of a deal. And it does wash out of my sheets and out of my clothes. So it doesn't actually stain. It comes right out in the wash. So, uh, But if that does bother you, just lay down like an extra sheet or lay down a towel or something if you don't want it to get on your sheets. But for me, it doesn't really bother me that bad because the self tanner is so great. So the color guard really helps to where you can see where you're applying it. So that just makes sure that everything is streak free. This blends out so easily and it does dry pretty fast, but I would say once you get everything done on your body, it takes maybe 30 minutes to really start to sink in. Um, and then once it really starts to develop, your skin will feel more normal, like to where you could almost get dressed. Um, I don't recommend wearing it out during the day though because it's just hard to go about your day without getting water on your skin because like any self tanner, it needs at least six hours to develop um, and you can't get your skin wet because it would wash it off and you'd have like white marks on your skin. Um, so I find it really hard to go throughout the day and not wash my hands or not splash water on me or if it's gonna rain. Um, and also with wearing tight clothes like a bra, like it could rub off to where you have like white marks. So I just like going to sleep in it. It's the easiest thing. You wake up the next morning and you rinse it off and you're good to go. So after I'm done applying it to my body, I like to just take a damp washcloth and kind of dab off any of the excess on my knuckles. I do this on my elbows and I talk all about more tips and stuff like this in that other video that I did. I will link for you down below. It's more in depth. Um, but this just really helps to make sure you don't have any dark areas like on your knuckles and your wrists and everything. So I also wanted to share with you how I've been applying it to my face this summer. And if you saw the video that I did on my summer makeup routine without using foundation, I talked about how I've been self tanning my face. And I didn't used to do this, but this self tanner does not break me out at all. My skin has never looked better recently since I've even been using this. So it definitely doesn't cause any acne for me and it just helps to make everything really even. 
I didn't used to do this and I probably won't in the winter time, but if I can get away with not wearing foundation and with just having self tanner and a little bit of concealer and powder, then I'm good to go for the summer. So I have been using it. I sometimes have to reapply if I exfoliate my face a lot, but it can last me like four to five days, which is awesome to get me through the work week where I don't have to spend a lot of time on my makeup. So I just wanna share with you real quick, I usually do my regular skincare. I do use toner and stuff after washing my face, and then I do go in with my moisturizer. This is a moisturizer from Fresh. I love this, I've talked about it before on my channel. It's definitely hands down the best night cream that I've ever used. So I apply that all over my face, and I let that set in to where it's not too dewy and stuff before going in with the self tanner. And then I take a Sigma foundation brush. You can use any foundation brush. You could use the mitt, but I don't really like to spread all of the germs from my body onto my face. So I just take a clean foundation brush. I pump a little bit onto the brush, like directly on the brush. And I just start blending it all over my face like if you were applying foundation. But a little goes a long way with this. You definitely don't want your face to be too dark and you do want to exfoliate your face beforehand so you don't end up with dark patches. Sometimes if you have dry skin like around your mouth or on your forehead, it will definitely turn darker in those areas. So you wanna make sure your face is moisturized beforehand um, to just to have that moisturizing barrier and you exfoliate beforehand. So to exfoliate before, I just washed my face using my um, Michael Todd Sonoclear, which is just a cleansing brush. I'll link it for you down below. It's just like a skincare brush that you would use with your normal cleanser and that did enough exfoliation for me. So I make sure to blend it really well into my hairline and also up onto my ears a little bit and just use whatever's left over on the brush like to go on your nose and stuff because your nose area can definitely look darker and around your brows and around your eyes. So I wouldn't get it too close under your eyes, just kind of blend it. Um, and you can just dab off any areas that look too dark with like a damp cloth if you need to, but I don't really have any trouble. It always looks really scary when you first put it on. Like I was terrified the first time that I used it, but once you wash it off and once you wash off that bronzer layer the next morning, it's such a pretty color that it doesn't look bad at all. Um, but I would definitely use it pretty sparingly and don't go overboard with it. I almost forgot to mention, after I apply the self tanner, I usually wait about 30 minutes and actually go in with a second layer. It does say you can do that in the directions and I do highly recommend it. In the winter time, I'll probably just go with one layer, but when I wanna be pretty dark, I wait for it to dry and set in a little bit and then go in with a second layer. So I just go over my entire body one more time. I don't usually go back over my hands and feet or my face because one layer is plenty in those areas, but I definitely do everywhere else and I get pretty dark with that. If you've seen other self tanner videos of mine, you'll notice that I always talk about how you have to apply it multiple days in a row to get pretty dark. But with this one, I can get as dark as I wanna be after just one night of application and that's with applying it twice but it's two times in a row in one night and that's so much easier. I don't have to fuss with it two nights in a row. I can do it right before going to the beach or to the lake or the pool and I'm good to go. It's just amazing. Um, if you had a big event or something or if you were gonna be going on vacation, I would almost do it a little bit early actually and not do it like the night before you leave but do it like the day before because then that gives your skin the full 24 hours to really develop. So I wouldn't do it like right before the night before a big event or something, I would do it the day before that. And that makes the big difference too, to me. So after everything is dried, that's when I usually go to bed and I try to leave it on even longer than six hours. So for me, I usually do this on Friday night and then I don't always shower right away on Saturday morning unless I have somewhere I need to be. Typically I'm just like doing chores around the house. So I will usually let it sit until like 10 a.m or 12 p.m. the next day until I actually shower again. And the longer it sits on your skin, the darker it will develop, but then your skin does kind of reach a maximum to where you can only develop it's so dark just depending on your skin tone and everyone is so different. So some people might get darker than others with this self tanner, um, but it really just depends on your skin. But for me, I like to at least wait until like nine or 10 a.m. the next morning. And then you wanna get in the shower and rinse off the color guard. And I like to just rinse with plain water. I'll still use soap on some areas, you know, but for the most part, I think it's good to just rinse it off. It does say that in the directions. And I think that is because it will continue to develop even after you rinse it off. So a lot of times with self tanner, like, you might look pretty dark, but you might not look as dark as you actually can be until like 24 hours after. So right now when I'm filming this, it's Saturday night and it is actually 24 hours since I did it and I look really dark to me. Uh, but I started noticing like the really darkness maybe around noon or so today. 
um, but this morning it definitely didn't look as dark. So keep that in mind, just rinse off with some water, pat yourself dry, and then you'll see your tan start to develop even more throughout the day. So after getting out of the shower, you definitely wanna moisturize your skin. I always use the Cetaphil moisturizing lotion. I just apply it all over my body, and that is because self-tanner can sometimes dry out your skin. And the drier your skin gets, the more likely it's gonna flake off sooner and the tan's gonna come off quicker. So keeping your tan hydrated is gonna ensure that it can last as long as it possibly can. So I just reapply this lotion every day. Sometimes I even apply it twice a day, like before bed, if I'm still feeling a little dry, especially on my elbows and on my hands. And I always use thick hand cream on my hands at night too. So I did, of course, wanna share with you a before and after. So before you can see my plain skin, my plain face with nothing on it and just how fair that I am and then the after, which is definitely a big difference. So again, this is 24 hours after applying the product and rinsing everything off and doing the full routine. And I would say I'm pretty dark. I would totally feel comfortable wearing a swimsuit being this dark. Um, so I definitely love that. If I wanted to get super dark, I could do another night. But again, I don't feel like I need to. This is plenty dark for me. So I hope that this review was helpful and detailed enough for you. I figured with a lot of people coming out of the summertime and going into fall within the next few weeks, you definitely wanna extend your summer tan. So I think this is a really great way to do it. And I would highly recommend this even in the spring and summer when you're wanting to be pretty dark. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and come back next week for another new video. If you haven't already subscribed, I usually do videos here on my channel all about naturally curly hair care, about everyday beauty and really simplified, easy tutorials for beginners. So I hope you stick around and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye everyone.